LEDs and resistors go hand in hand like fries and ketchup. Together they form one of the first circuits beginners make and seeing that LED light up for the first time is just so satisfying. But there are problems with this circuit. It is inefficient and unstable. You lose some energy in the resistor and the current through the LED can change depending on the voltage. It is not a big deal if you're making a simple flashlight, but in other cases you need something a little bit better. And because I like searching for chips that you might have never heard of, I did find something better. Here, let me show you. So these two are the boards for a project that I'm working on. Basically, it's an automatic light. This board will hold an 18650 rechargeable battery, which will power several light modules like this one. And this board holds up to 8 LEDs. As you can see, there are no resistors on it. Instead, I'm using this little chip, RT9300, which is a constant current LED driver. As the name implies, this LED driver pushes a constant current through the LED, even if the input voltage changes. Think of it as a variable resistor that adjusts itself to maintain the desired current. The RT9300 works with up to 4 LEDs and it comes in two variants. One is fixed at 15 and the other at 20 mA per channel. I'm using the 20 mA version. And if all of this sounds familiar, it's because I've shown you other LED drivers on the channel. However, this is one of the absolute simplest and I think it deserves its own video. How simple is it? Well, the typical application circuit only calls for a single decoupling capacitor close to the chip. Sprinkle your LEDs around it and enjoy the light show. This makes it the second simplest LED driver I have ever used. At the number one spot is still the AL5809, which drives LEDs all by itself. I also made a video about it, so go check it out later. Now, I know you're typing in the comments that nothing is simpler than a resistor, but hear me out. For my project, I'll be using a lithium-ion battery. The voltage on these can vary between 3 volts when they're empty and 4.2 volts when they're full. And with my system in particular, the output goes to almost 5 volts when the battery is charging. With such a voltage range, there is no ideal resistor value. I have to either put a big resistor and sacrifice some of the brightness, or use a smaller one, but then risk damaging the LEDs over time. This constant current LED driver gives me a steady 20 mA even if the voltage goes up or down. And it barely takes any space on the PCB, which I got from my sponsor JLC PCB. Making your own custom circuit boards has never been easier thanks to JLC PCB. They've been providing affordable and reliable PCB and assembly services for over 19 years, serving millions of engineers around the world. Prices start at just $2 for 5 PCBs, so they can fit anyone's budget. I've personally used JLC PCB for many of my projects, especially when I needed to have the components professionally soldered onto my PCBs. Placing an order is as easy as uploading all my files, and I instantly get a quote. Turnaround times are fast, and you can have your PCBs shipped worldwide in just a few days. Do not miss JLC PCB's special discount on 6-layer PCBs, and use my links below to sign up and get free coupons. Now let's see how well this driver works. My PCB follows the recommended circuit from the chip's datasheet, with a few small additions. This is where the input voltage goes, and this connection is for wiring several light modules in parallel. Bridging the middle connection enables the chip, but it can also be used for brightness control, we'll test that in a bit. The datasheet indicates that the chip can drive 4 LEDs, but I have spots for 8 LEDs on purpose. I want to see if the chip can handle 2 LEDs in series per channel, instead of just one. I will also test another example circuit where all 4 channels are tied together to drive 8 parallel LEDs. Now I've soldered 4 LEDs, one to each channel of the driver. I've got 5 volts on the input and a jumper on the enable pin. When I complete the circuit for one of the channels with my multimeter, the LED lights up. The current is around 20 mA, which means the driver is working properly. I'm now testing each individual driver channel and all of them pass around 20 mA. I'm noticing the current is not super precise, it is off by a tiny bit, but it's close enough. And here I have completed the connection for all four LED channels. All LEDs are glowing as expected and together they're pulling around 80 mA from the power supply. Nice! 
Now watch what happens when I reduce the input voltage. That's right, nothing. And that's the advantage of the LED driver. The current remains constant even if the voltage changes. There are limits to this, of course. The supply voltage needs to be high enough to overcome the forward voltage of the LEDs. It also needs to be below the recommended maximum for the chip, which is 5.5 volts. Ok, next test. Two LEDs in series per channel. This time the LEDs do not turn on until I give the driver a high enough voltage. The good news is that I can get it to push 20 milliamps through every pair of LEDs in series. Unfortunately, the input voltage is beyond the operational limit for the driver. So while this setup works, it is not recommended. However, you can safely connect two LEDs in series if they have a lower forward voltage. If you use red or green LEDs, that will not overload the driver. Now let's test the other circuit from the datasheet. We see that all four channels are shown tied together and they are driving eight LEDs in parallel. I first bridged just two of the channels which I expect to give me twice the current. Sure enough, when I connect an LED, I get 40 milliamps through it. And when I hook up all channels, the driver pushes 80 milliamps through this extra powerful LED. If we follow the datasheet and connect a bunch of LEDs in parallel, the driver will still deliver the same current of 80 milliamps. But since we have eight LEDs in parallel, each of them gets just around 10 milliamps. By the way, you can totally connect even more LEDs in parallel. Just keep in mind that having more of them will reduce the brightness of each individual LED. I have to mention that, in theory, wiring up LEDs in parallel like this is not recommended. But in practice, you can get away with it as long as you're using LEDs with the same specs. For example, in this setup, all LEDs came from the same bag, so specs like forward voltage should be almost identical. Besides, they are rated for 20 milliamps, but they're only getting around 10 milliamps each, which is a very big safety margin. I can be sure that this circuit will work fine for a long time. With this driver, you can control the brightness of the LEDs using PWM. That is a signal that pulses the LEDs on and off many times per second. Here I am generating a PWM signal with an Arduino, and you can see what that looks like on the scope. The PWM signal is connected to the enable pin of the driver and, as expected, turning the potentiometer controls the brightness. It can be completely off or at maximum power, so PWM dimming works fine with this driver. Finally, let's talk efficiency. Unfortunately, this driver is not the best when it comes to it. As the case is with resistors, some energy is dissipated as heat to maintain the current at the required level. The higher the input voltage, the higher the losses. So if you need better efficiency, you should use a switching LED driver, but these can be a lot more complicated. Still, this driver can be useful in the right situation. Thanks for watching and subscribe to never miss a video.